everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted, and today we're going to be going over the checklist for the candle making wine nights. Now, I just finished another one just a couple days ago. I still have, you can't see it here, but I have stuff littered across this office. I haven't packed up or done anything with it, and I'm not sure that I'm going to because I've got two more coming up in a couple weeks. So I'm basically keeping everything here and going over everything that I need and coming up with a checklist because, of course, I forgot something as soon as I got there. Now, I did this one with Vino Aquino uh, during the video that you just saw before this one. I'll show a little bit more throughout this, and uh, it's a local wine bar, winery. Very, very nice place, and very grateful that they let us come in and do this candle making wine shop or wine uh, workshop. And it turned out extremely well. We had uh, 20 people sign up. I believe 18 or 19 showed up, and uh, it went very well. Uh, the only problem that I did have is I did for one I didn't have a checklist so now I now have a checklist and that's what I'm going to be going over here. The one thing that I forgot was pen casings. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I use a pen casing to place all the wicks, and I usually have a bag of about 50 or 60 of these that I take with me so that I can hand them out for every single station. And as I was getting ready to start kind of teaching everybody how to place their wicks, I realized that I forgot the bag. And luckily, the owners of the place had uh, a big jar full of pens, so I found a bunch of uh, pens that work for it. I basically took those and uh, just took all the parts out of them so that I could use four casings for 20 people, which really, it didn't slow things down because a lot of people got there early. So I got four of them and just sat down at the first table of four, had them go through, kind of taught everybody how to do the wicks and basically did that from table to table, which is not the way that I want to do it. I, I like to get up in front of the class, tell everybody all at once how to do it so that everybody's doing it at the same time. But I uh, had to roll with the punches. I forgot them. Only had four for 20 people and uh, had to figure something out real quick. So by the time I got done from table to table, and the bad part about that, and not a bad part, I don't like it because I have people waiting, and the class hadn't started yet, so there was really no downtime. We're going to get going right about 7, uh, 7 o'clock. The class was from 7 to 9, and uh, I got done placing, or having the, the last group of people, two or three, place their wicks at like 7.05. So it actually turned out really well. I just don't like having people wait. I like to do it all at once. So that's exactly why I came up with this actual checklist, which is something a smart person would have done to begin with. And I'm gonna go over that here. Now, again, this is gonna change depending on the candle wine night or the workshop that you put together, but this is a pretty good list. And I'm gonna go ahead and list everything right here on either side of me to put everything down here. And then I'm also gonna have this list in the video description down below, which will link to the website so that you can download a Word document or a PDF uh, that has everything in here so that uh, if you do put on a workshop like, like this, you can see exactly what I can, uh, what I have and what I take. So basically starting out, um, I don't do individual burners in my candle making uh, workshops. I bring in two melters because it just goes a lot easier. Uh, I explain how to melt the wax down. If you're gonna do this at home, I tell people how they would do it, the double boiler method. So starting out, uh, I've got two melters and I bring two of them because they each hold around 11 to 12 pounds. Uh, for this class that I'm doing, I pour three eight ounce candles, which you're pouring about 20 ounces of wax into the, uh, the measuring cups that I have. So 11 or 12 pounds of wax and one melter will cover eight people really well. It'll, it'll probably cover a little bit more than that without having to add more wax into it. But I usually keep my classes right around 15 people and two melters covers that very well. So if you're gonna go above 15, I would definitely look at a third melter, otherwise you're gonna be watching the wax and filling it up uh, at least a little bit to catch those last couple of people that are pouring their uh, wax. So I basically I've got two melters. With those two melters, I found out uh, <laughs> through a trial and error that you're gonna want two separate power strips for each of those. Uh, they don't draw a ton of power, but they do flicker on and off, so they're they're constantly uh, surging, and uh, that power surge can flip the breaker, or basically flip a power strip. So I found that out at the very first class I went to, so definitely get two. I had basically two melters plugged into one strip, and literally after 30 seconds, it would pop it, and both of them would go. So two power strips, one for each melter, just to make sure that you're safe. Uh, of course, you're going to want your wax your jars or tins, whichever you're gonna be using, uh, lids, of course, wicks, wick stickers, so any type of wick sticker. And for this one, 
I use the, uh, the little stickers. It makes it quick and easy. You don't have to wait around for anything to set. If it was gonna be a full day or a, like a real candle shop uh, or a candle workshop, I would bring in the red RTV. Uh, I've got the wick holders, which again, I'll have a link in the video description down below. It's the bag clips that I used. You've seen a video for that one as well. Your fragrance oils, and I try to bring a pretty good amount of these. I think I brought uh, 24 last time, just to give people a real good variety to choose from. Your measuring cup, which they're gonna fill into. Again, the, I get these at the dollar store for a dollar. Uh, they're extremely useful. Uh, and at a, a dollar, you just kind of factor that into the price. Um, they clean up uh, kind of difficult, so I don't actually mind going out and just buying another 15. Stirring utensils, I found uh, popsicle sticks work really well, and you can also get uh, just basic plastic spoons, and you can get those at the dollar store for like, uh, I think the pack was like 48 or 50 of them. The pen casings, of course, I've got this one highlighted so I don't forget this again. Uh, pen casing for placing the wicks. Uh, you've got labels, so depending on the workshop that you do, I usually try to put my logo and the uh, Vino Aquino is what I put on this one. So. Uh, I put the logo on there. The middle part was blank so that they can kind of style their own labels. And uh, an another item I have on this list is letter stamps with ink pads so they can put whatever they want on them. I've got small little shot cups for the fragrance oil. Uh, wire cutters, of course, and I'll include a link in the video description down below. Basically just uh, wire snips or uh, uh, cutting pliers that you can get at Home Depot. They cut the wicks extremely well. So after you're done, everybody takes off their bag clips. You can just walk around and clip everybody's wicks. A heat gun. If you're using soy, you really don't need one, but just in case somebody moves their wicks around and uh, it messes up their tops a little bit, it's good to have a heat gun there so that you can just kind of smooth that out. Uh, paper towels, of course. Label art, stamps, customizing items. This will basically, get, like I was saying earlier, I have little uh, letter stamps and different colored ink pads so people can come up with their own labels. And then I've got some additional items that can definitely help. These aren't really a must, but uh, you might wanna have these just cause it's a good idea. The last couple times I've been there, I forgot my business cards. It's one thing to tell people, just add you on Snapchat or Instagram, Facebook, your website, anything like that. But people like business cards. So uh, if you don't have the QR code, which I bring also, it's always a good idea to have business cards along with that. Uh, you want to have candles to sell. Uh, a lot of people want to see what you have, and I have definitely made additional money at these candle workshops having a bunch of my candles there so that people can buy those as well. It, this one is another good one I like to have. A lot of people, uh, I get a few people every single class that ask about different waxes, some people that have done candles before. So any info on the different uh, materials that you're using, the different waxes, the wicks, uh, anything like that, and then of course, I bring a couple bags of all the different waxes that I use. So this last one, I had the, the coconut paraffin wax, I had the joy wax, I had soy wax, and I had the uh, 6006. So everybody, once they were done pouring their candles, they get up, walk around, grab some wine. They can walk around and see the different waxes uh, that you would use in different candles. So that's pretty much it with this one. It, I, I know I probably left something off of that. And if I, uh, if I can think of it by the time I edit this video, I'll just put it up with the rest of them here. I left off something that you think is very beneficial to have at one of these workshops. Please let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to go through and update that as well. And it could be something that I'm just not thinking of that, uh, that I would add to a future workshop. So that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, please ask in the comments down below. And of course you can add me on all the social media platforms listed down below in the video description, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, the website, my email. And uh, if you wanna reach out, please do so on any one of those. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you.